This is Chapter 2 of The Making of Moons of Darcelon, the video game that took me eight years to complete, for which I developed my own retro pixelation system. As we saw in the previous chapter, the game has two cameras, the fixed camera and the world camera. With the latter, we can film all kinds of objects and always obtain pixelated images because it cannot capture small pixels. In Moons of Darcelon, we mainly have two types of objects, normal sprites and 3D objects. Normal sprites. To render them correctly, you have to make them at zoom 1 and represent them in the world at scale 1. This way, they will be rendered correctly, and each pixel will fit into a valid grid position, even if the sprite is at world coordinates with decimals. If the render texture has no anti-aliasing, the GPU will decide to show a pixel at one position of the render texture or the adjacent one. If you look closely, the alien's weapon is barely affected by these few decimals. And this is because it is not a sprite, but the second type of object, a 3D model. 3D models have obvious advantages over sprites. You can rotate them, and since the camera cannot render small pixels, this model will be pixelated. Although you can also rotate a sprite and rely on the camera to pixelate it, the results are not as good. In Moons of Darcelon, the most evident case is that of the vehicles. They are entirely normal 3D models, with the unique characteristic that they lack albedo textures. This is a deliberate decision because they tend to look better when pixelated, unless the texture is very simple or heavily blurred to diffuse the details. Otherwise, they will render as a random, pixel noise that appears inconsistently across frames. However, you've been observing another process I haven't yet discussed. Without this process, the image wouldn't look like this, but like that. Despite having large pixels, it doesn't quite look like pixel art. Why? There are too many colors. Pixel art isn't just a low-resolution image. It must have distinct color jumps and not gradients. The graphics need to be palletized. How is this usually done? You select the colors of your palette in your favorite drawing program and manually use these colors to create the sprites, ensuring your game can only be displayed in this way. You cannot change the palette in real time. Yes, but there are games where you can change the palette. But these games are usually monochromatic. No, but these palettes do have color. The palettes have color, but the graphics are monochromatic. They are created in grayscale, and then, using a post-processing shader, one of the colors from that palette is assigned to each gray level. To ensure it looks good, only four shades of gray are typically chosen, corresponding to each color that will have the same luminance as the original gray tones. Therefore, the colors are perceived more as shading than actual colors. How does Moons of Darcelon handle this? In the fixed camera, there is a post-processing asset that handles this task. It works with a 3D texture in the form of a lookup table, taking as input the pixel to be rendered with a real color and returning the reduced color from the lookup table. This is a way to visualize a 3D texture, a cube where each axis x, y, z corresponds to a value of r, g, b, which are the input values, the r, g, b values of the real color pixel that the camera has filmed. We use those RGB values as XYZ and access the 3D texture to read the corresponding palette color. Since the 3D texture is created with repeated colors over large areas, many colors with similar RGB values will return exactly the same palette color, producing the characteristic color jumps of pixel art. Multiple 3D textures can be created for multiple palettes. This is how Moons of Darcelon manages real-time palette changes without needing to redesign any graphics. By maintaining a similar color identity, blue elements remain blue, as long as the palette contains some blue hues. This 3D texture lookup table technique is applied in professional video production and is known as color correction by LUT, lookup table, or color grading. It is used in many movies and series to give a specific aesthetic to the image throughout the work. It is not used as intensively as in Moons of Darcelon, because in a movie, it's not desirable to have color jumps. Instead, it's used to ensure all greens are similar or to tone down reds so they tend to brown, for example. In addition to this color reduction for palettizing the colors, there's a need to achieve that analog CRT screen look that was used for playing 8-bit and 16-bit games. How is this done in today's retro indie games? Most don't do it. They either forget how it looked on a CRT or choose not to do it for convenience, I suppose. Some emulate scan lines by adding darker lines, but in most cases, 
they don't bother to align them with the pixels. How does Moons of Darcelon achieve this with a post-processing shader that adds scan lines, blur, and chromatic aberration? The scan lines are dark lines as well, but aligned with the pixel grid and with a certain degree of blur to always keep the pixel contours and scan lines somewhat diffuse. The goal isn't to make it blurry, but to avoid a line with a completely sharp contour. The blur in Moons of Darcelon is custom and low consumption. Typically, you obtain all the surrounding pixels of the pixel being rendered and average them. But in my tests, and for the slight blur I wanted to apply, I could achieve the same results by only reading the pixels to the sides and above and below. Chromatic aberration is an effect that Moons of Darcelon applies subtly to mimic an effect that occurred in CRTs at the pixel edges. These pixels didn't usually align perfectly with the screen grid that filtered the light from the cathode ray tube's RGB beams. Thus, depending on where a pixel landed, the edges tended to show more blue or red intensity. Chromatic aberration isn't exactly the same, but it's an effect that somewhat resembles this. And that concludes the second chapter of this video series on how Moons of Darcelon was made. In chapter 3, I will talk about the 2D dynamic lighting system. Subscribe if you don't want to miss it.